All right. Hey, everybody. It's Darren Tipton with VBAdrenaline.com, and welcome back to another episode of the VB Adrenaline podcast. And uh, we talk to people all around the volleyball world, athletes, coaches, uh, parents, etc. And today um, we have a special guest, uh, Gilad Drone, uh, the director of volleyball at IMG Academy. And Gilad, first of all, thanks for us finally meeting up. We've gone back and forth a little bit, phone calls and emails, but thanks for taking time today. Thank you for having me uh, there. And it's a great pleasure to meet with you in person and obviously share, uh, answer some questions and yeah. Really, really honored that you chose IMG to be part of your segment today. Well, um, IMG, we're going to get into uh, the whole nine yards of the program, the facilities in a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's in the sports world, IMG has been known um, for decades now and adding volleyball and has to be pretty exciting. And I know there's been a buzz in the volleyball community about it. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about your coaching experience and your experience in the sport, uh, because reading your resume, it's extensive. Just tell people, um, take as much time as you want to brag yourself up in your coaching experience. <laughs> yeah. So I, I uh, grew up in Israel, um, played 10 years on Israeli national team, 12 years professionally as an outside hitter. Um, so I met my wife who played overseas. She's from the US and after we got married, we moved here in 96. I first uh, joined Babatucci at Temple University. Uh, I am 96 to 2000. We won three A-10 championships for the first time in that school. Um, some notable, um, we have uh, Sharia Bryan, Kobe Bryant's sister on the team. She was our first MVP for A-10 championship in 97. Uh, Kiko Hatakimaya, right now assistant coach at Syracuse, Alma Kovaci, now head coach at West Point. Um, I then left, worked in a financial world, and started a club called, you know, was part of Synergy when Kim Glass was part of it, the US Olympian in uh, uh, 2008, silver medalist. Uh, started a club uh, called Philadelphia Volleyball Academy, which later turned into East Coast Power now. And then um, Got a head coaching. My first head coaching job was at Villanova University um, from 04 to 07. I think we have uh, the biggest turnaround in the Big East at the time. And then in 07, I got a chance to move to University of San Francisco at the West Coast Conference uh, when I coached nine years, took the team to be as high as 20 in the country. Uh, NCAA tournament, uh, all-time winners coach there, both conference and overall. Some of the notable assistants that I have there was obviously Dan Fisher, who is now the Pitt head coach, Scotty Wang, the head coach at Pepperdine, first jobs with me, Ari Smith, Angus, now the Marshall head coach, Great. Al Smith, the beach coach at Tulane, um, Ken Co now at UNLV, and I, I, Tara Hiddle later at Dartmouth, now it's the Colorado uh, Springs coach, I think. So plenty, plenty of coaches that I work with and mentor over the years. Um, in 2016, I moved to the East Coast, closer to flying home, visiting my family at Dartmouth and help them to be uh, finished with two top four finishes um, before I left as my, my, my son went to college. And last year I was assisting Alma, again, a uh, former player of mine at the uh, Army to kind of help them out. And we finished second in the Patriot League. And when IMG called me, I was looking to what's my next chapter and how I can help and develop. I predominantly like to develop, um, you know, and uh, when IMG called me in December and I started connecting with them, I realized that this can be a really good path. And especially since we are a young program, first year I have a chance to really imprint what it's gonna be going forward. Uh, like any program, you have the up and down and the challenges, but it's been super exciting. And I look forward for what's the years to come to to be, you know, it's a perfect place for motivated young student athlete who wants to to grow and develop, uh, you know, building the right stuff, building the right foundation. But we have here everything from the sports science to make this uh, a great experience. Yeah. And uh, questions come to my mind as far as uh, what might be different with your role now as the director of ops, as opposed to a head coach and forming 
that, uh, you know, forming the, the program since it is brand new. What are some of your key roles? Yeah, so I oversee the entire programs from, from development of the student athletes to summer camps, to events like hosting the U.S. Uh, national development teams, possibly bringing some international teams here or clubs here, hosting co college camp clinics here. So, so the the job is holistic to the touch, not just in training, which is something that I've done as a club director. I've done it as a college coach. You know, interact in many different ways. I, I ran my own business before, so I have that background and. Mostly, you know, uh, helping to develop also the current coaches here and, and hire the right staff so we can put up a really, really strong foundation for a strong team for the boarding students here as well as the club players. And then, you know, beyond that, um, you know, our, our camps here are huge, you know, and we need to make sure that we have the right stuff and the great, we, we provide a great experience because like, Volleyball is part of it, but we do leadership, we do mental training, mental performance, nutrition. Um, and we have a holistic approach to how to help someone be the best version of themselves. And, you know, and uh, it's more so like, you know, like being in a college student, but in a high school level. And, and today, I think one of the things that attract me to the job is a lot of the students, athletes going from high school to college are just not mentally prepared. To the college game they're going from twice a week to maybe three times a week they have a tons of private coaches all over the place telling them that but to be a good teammates to be someone that knows how to work in an environment that is you know super competitive volleyball across the country now is very very competitive yes. um you know so you see all this transfer portal all these kids are not happy why are they not happy are they not happy because now they asked to train five days a week are they not happy because now coaches are giving them feedback or challenging them. And they were always told they're the best ever, you know? So there's a lot of things that uh, come to, to play. Um, and if I can influence those who want to be, I think their career going forward will be better because of it. And, and right now with the pro leagues coming up, there is opportunity beyond. So be yeah. better prepared and, and taking care of your body and understand what it is. It's really fascinating. And like you said, IMG has this, uh, tradition it started from the tennis days with nick boletary here with all the greats and then basketball and football so we are just in the beginning stage but the excitement is definitely here well and i love that part that you talk about um the preparation because that's a big part of our mission statement because we see so much of that athletes rushing into decisions and really parents and athletes not having any idea what they're getting into yeah. when they go to college, right? It sounds like a great idea, but are they preparing themselves? Um, it, you know, so that's cool that that's what you guys, one of the things you're focused on. Next question I have for you that's come up. So people have asked, is it strictly a club program? Is it uh, a prep program? Because I know there were some matches in the fall is there a fall season? Is there a club? Explain what an athlete that's at the boarding school, what they would go through in a year. Yes. So obviously that's going to have an evolution with time. So as we evaluate what happened last year, we're looking to make it better going forward. Yeah. I think uh, when they first started, they did not take part in high school season. We are looking to be part of the Florida high school season. Obviously, IMG has to be under certain guidelines, you know, from, from, from that perspective. So, but I think it's important for our students since they are high school student to have a high school season. So they feel like they have still that high school experience, but we're going to emphasize on the development over the entire nine, 10 months that they're here. So, you know, if, uh, it's not going to be your high school system wants to do this. And then the kids on a Sunday go to do club. And then when club, as soon as high school is over, they jumping and doing all, everything's going to have a progression here. So um, we will have a high school season. Uh, the emphasis will be on development, uh, you know, holistic development, as well as preparing them. And the benefit will be now the kids in the high school, we might have several varsities, several JV, depends on the size of the, the classes that we're going to have as we grow it. But but when we go to club, we can have the kids play under a different entity also as a team. So they will have the benefit of just being in the same system with the same type of training, with the same type of uh, 
uh, strength and conditioning program. And, and as we're building that and we have a system in place, we should see a significant uh, advantage for that and an improvement for both, you know, because right now a lot of parents are just jumping. So, you know, like I give you an example, someone say, hey, someone send me this, someone send me that, or they're looking on Instagram and they said, this thing is good, or hey, here's a, someone wants to do a jump program. Right now we have the best sports science people here and we can facilitate it based on the age and the numbers and what we, on the timing of the season, which is to avoid injuries and, and see improvement. So that's, I think, going to be a huge advantage for kids here as we're going forward. Um, and so the process, uh, maybe the acceptance process, because I know, I know at the beginning there was a lot, a lot of social media activity. And are you guys out actively recruiting athletes to IMG, or is it simply they apply, or a little of both? I think it's a combination. Um, we have leads of uh, athletes who are interested. Obviously, if they watch your program and they want to get in touch with us, that's the best way. Um, and then we have uh, a team here that evaluate if it's a good fit, you know, um, for them, both uh, financially, both athletically, both the positions that we do. Uh, but there is there is opportunities, you know, and, and, and as we grow, we, we're looking for just – Again, it's not for everyone. Someone, you know, there's a difference between playing the game and loving the game. There's a, in that, and I think now when kids go to college and they got to go from the two times a week and all of a sudden they find out. And that's why we see this enormous amount of transfers because they're never happy where they are, you right. know. Um, but, but you know, I, I think that's, that's a combination of things. So, like, yes, we will have a lead and, you know, I'll go watch a video or whatnot. And then we have a, a whole system here. So... But generally, we are interested in anyone who is interested in us to get in touch with us, to learn more about the process, to learn about how the application goes, what are the, the, the thing. Yes, there was a buzz on, a, on a social media. There's a buzz everywhere for everything. But hopefully, again, uh, even through this interview, uh, families who are interested can find a way to reach out to us and send an email, fill up a questionnaire, and then we can, again, this is not a club, it's a, it's a school. You know, at the end of the day, we are a school. So, and this is a really great school. I mean, we look at it, we have over 200 student athletes last year receiving Division One scholarships. We have variant from Ivy Leagues to SEC to ACC to Big Ten. So, so, so students here get an amazing education um, and and a holistic approach to everything they do in terms of leaderships, in terms of their mental health, in terms of performance. Uh, training in terms of nutrition so they can finish if they're not even playing sports anymore they can still be successful uh wherever they do so um you know and and, and our campus here is 1400 student athletes so think about a college campus that only have student athletes around in, in 15 different sports 60 600 acres of land here so it's like I said, I, I saw on uh, Max Preps that our weight room is nicer than the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, that tells you the facilities that we have. So, yeah, definitely uh, top notch here. And uh, anyone that is interested in watch this interview, uh, get in touch with me and I'll forward it to the right person. Absolutely. And uh, as you keep talking, more and more questions come to mind, which is great. Uh, as we learn about your product, uh, as your guys' program and the facilities, we're going to get back more. So I want to talk about those facilities. But uh, but next up, uh, we're going to take our break and, and go through our uh, prospect profile uh, features that uh, we go through every week. And uh, Again, these are some of the top 2026s we're focusing on right now as we build up to June. And again, these are all athletes that have filled out a profile on our vbadrenaline.com. Uh, great way for us to track them all the way through verbal, all the way through signing day visits. And it's pretty exciting for us now as we have had some of these athletes have signed up for nearly a year uh, we watched them the year before the recruiting, and now they're getting ready to go into this big summer of more camps, official visits, uh, deciding schools, and it's really, really pretty cool. So uh, the three feature athletes we have this week are Caroline Prohoda, and Caroline is playing DS Sombro uh, for a very, very talented uh, Houston Skyline team, uh, just 
earned their Nationals bid last week. But as you talk about how deep in talent her team is, she set her for uh, for her Texas high school team. You can see her uh, the three. Uh, the three college camps she attended last summer, and I, we got to watch her quite a bit at at Triple Crown. And athletic would be a great word uh, just to describe her, but so much talent on that team. And Carolyn's one of those that just fits in. Uh, definitely going to play at the next level and multi skilled athlete setter. DS, bro, all those characteristics, and you know she plays at a high level. Uh, speaking of IMG, one of our uh, one of our profiles, Dahlia Roberts, and we got to see her in Florida at the Phenom uh, training. Her and a few of her teammates back in December, uh, seems like two years ago, but uh, a couple of her, uh, uh, her camp she attended last summer out of Texas originally, and you see all that red from her top scores, and she's putting up some big physical numbers as well. And we got to watch her um, in God, their first or second club tournament in um, in at Triple Crown uh, back in February. So Dahlia Roberts, again, just another one of those talented Texas, uh, their hometown, and now playing with IMG Academy, which we're talking about today. And the last one, Isa Richardson, and I love, she reached out to us, uh, another athlete we just hadn't heard much about. We've been able to watch film on her, and again, just in that Texas area, she plays with Red Storm, uh, middle blocker, and we've talked how deep uh, this middle blocking class is, 115-inch block touch already, and you see the variance of camp she's already attended, and so Isa Richardson's somebody to keep an eye on just in that state of Texas where there's be 50 to 60 Division One prospects, another name that just doesn't get talked about a lot, and so uh, college coaches, if you're out there, uh, Make sure you check her out on Huddle because I think you'll be uh, be impressed. Just one of the many talented middle blockers. But it's been fun for us to get to know um, Isa through her filling out this profile. And and uh, maybe you could be next. Again, if you want a plot prospect or player profile, simply go to vbadrenaline.com, fill it out, and you can update that uh, and tell your story uh, throughout your recruiting process, we have 2029s uh, that have prospect profiles already and to see them update it every so often to follow them for the next three to four years and watch their growth and development and where they decide to go. It's going to be a lot of fun. So something cool about our site. And those are three uh, profile athletes uh, for this week. And if you want, go ahead and check that out on our site. Uh, more and more college coaches are stopping by and definitely the most popular part of our site right now. But uh, with that, let's get back to the podcast for this week. And again, Gilad, uh, Gilad Drone, who is the director of volleyball at IMG Academy, brand new, brand new program for volleyball. IMG has been around in the sports world for a couple, maybe three decades, um, if I remember right, with tennis. Yeah. When the tennis style uh, started, I think, in the mid to late 80s, maybe. Um, yeah. But talk to me about the facilities, right? Because I was on there before, and I was looking – um, we'll talk about NTDP in a second, but I get to be on campus in a few weeks. And I didn't know, it looked a lot more like a resort for me. Um, you know, living in South Dakota, that Florida landscape looked pretty nice. So talk to me about your facility, state of the art. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, you, only if you're here in person, you can actually see. I mean, you obviously saw the videos online and if you if you Google IMG Academy and, and you see that, but it doesn't do justice until you're actually here and you see uh, all the gyms and uh, facilities are like as good as any college or pro team in the, in the, in the country or in the world. So, um, you know, we have NBA players coming and training here in the summer, NFL, the MLS is doing training came here in the winter because it's warmer and they don't have to be in the Chicago and the coldest area. And, you know, so it's, it's just uh, a, a place where, you always can find someone, you know, uh, yeah. at a high level. And it's a, I was, I was a couple of weeks ago in a Caribbean championship 
and spoke to a couple of uh, MLB baseball players there, and they all say they would have known they can come and train here. They would have trained here every year. You know, so uh, it, it's just like uh, if you're in a world of sports, it, uh, like I said, from the sports science, from the, the, the weight rooms, the training rooms, to the gyms itself, the facilities are amazing. Uh, the kid stays in the dorms. That is, it's very, very nice. They have their own student center, the $30 million investment they did this year to have basically almost like what a college will have for the student center. So they have the, the, the cafeteria there, but they also have uh, the arcades and the different things there, the, the academic center, the Gatorade center, all of these facilities are like as, as unbelievable. Like I have never been in a college campus when the facilities are at this level. Um, you know, another thing that we do here is, as, as I'm touching for the next step is also helping in the, in a college recruiting. So we have academics, you know, uh, staff that specifically target kids. And then we have obviously the coaching who helps the same as kids will go in anywhere. So having someone that been in the other side for 23 years can also help in the proper assessment and also in a connection, uh, for, uh, the, with the college teams. What what would an athlete's normal, like a training day, what does it look like for them with the balance of school training? Because you're doing more um, in the mental training, the, the lifting that you're talking about. What would a normal day kind of look like? Yeah, so the, it's, it's pretty much like if you would be in a college environment, I would say. Um, we have blocks, so it depends on your team and your sports. In our case, volleyball, they, the blocks is in the morning, 8 to 11 in the morning. So kids will have breakfast, our players will have breakfast, they'll go to the training room, they'll get ready, and then from like 8 to 10, they will have volleyball, let's say, session. Some days we have um, lifting day, so it can go either from 8 to 9, and then we practice 9 to 11, or they'll go 10 to 11. Some days we have agility sessions as, a, you know, uh, as part of the volleyball uh, development. Um, and some days we have the, you know, uh, once a week we have what we call the uh personal development uh team working so it can be the mental performance the the leadership the nutrition all these uh special things that we provide and they go in the, in the cyclical part of the training so if you think a lot of people say well img is very costly i don't know but if you look at a normal family who spend x amount of dollars on the club team and then they drive and then they drive x amount of mileage and then they travel X amount of this, and, and, and then they add a pro personal trainer, a nutritionist, a mental coach, a this and that, sports psychologist. At the end of the day, they might spend the same amount that they're here, but then the kids don't have, they stay in the same environment for the entire time. And it's for the 10 months that they're here, or if they stay here for three, four years, it depends if what age they join the program. So the benefits are far exceeded what you will do and it's the same people. You don't have to jump around. Well, groceries aren't cheap for high school kids nowadays either. So yeah. they get the groceries paid for. Yeah, exactly. So it's, <laughs> part, it's part of, you know, when someone say, well, it's, I'm like, you would have paid 20 grand a year to feed your kid anyway. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So it's, it's all, it's all, uh, you know, it's all how you look at it. What, uh, uh, what about your coaching staff? Where, where do they come from? Where do you find them? You talk about that a little bit. So I'm in the process now of, you know, evaluating everything since I got here in February. So, um, you know, obviously in a process of hiring new staff. So I'm looking for the best possible coaches we can get. Some of them will be coming from the college ranking. Um, you know, it's funny. You now a lot of college coaches tell me that they they see me and it's like, oh, you know, uh, they're, they're, you know, uh, and, and so I'm, 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 I'm in a position when we're expanding, so we will look to bring the best coaches we can bring here to help and believe in what we do and 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 work under my guidance and learn, you know, and I can help. Like I said, I develop a lot of coaches over the years and I'll continue to do that to mentor and help them if this is a stepping stone or this is something that they're passionate about. All our positions here are full-time position. So, you know, it's including the the medicals and the benefits and the retirement from day one. So it, it is a good job, you know, obviously you might not pay as much as the top uh, programs, the college programs in the country, but we're just starting and there is opportunity to to get there, you know. So uh, I'm excited about that and I'm excited of the pool of coaches that come. Currently we have three coaches, but 
you know, I'm already hiring a fourth one that comes in this week and then another one that hopefully will join us in the next month. And by four, we should have a staff of eight, you know, so. So how do you do the balance? Um, because I'm sure you're looking at, um, in essence, is it like not a junior college, but, you know, junior colleges build their resumes on how many athletes they place at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm sure there's that aspect where you want to see the athletes to college, but the competitive aspect, I mean, are you trying to be the top volleyball club in the country? What are the, what are the goals on the court? Yeah. So I think that's going to go with time. You know, I think at the, any club or any school aspiration is to be the best in the country. You know, for that, you gotta be healthy, gotta be lucky and you have to have talent, you know? So, uh, uh, obviously, like I said, it's not for everyone. So like a lot of clubs, as you see, when they get closer in certain region, certain players likes to uh, to join a certain club and that's what makes them a little more competitive. Here, as we grow, hopefully we, we, we draw more and more competitive kids. I can tell you that there's some power five college kids who committed who said, well, we're going to be invested with NIL, with full scholarship. Why not come into IMG and get ahead of ourselves so our you know, our overall uh, marketability and ability to make an impact as freshmen, you know, uh, grow, you know. So it's not just like for someone who hopes to be in Division One. It can also be someone that's already there, right. um, you know. And, and like I said, at the end of the day, we are not necessarily just about, hey, let's be the best in the country. We're here to help as many kids as wants us to help them um, and, and, and be, re be uh, real with them, you know. I mean, I think part of the... Uh, issues everybody run to is you got to have um, you have to have transparency you got to tell the person when they come where can they fit you know uh, and uh, you know we are no different than any other sports you can't take a uh, hundred pounds running back and tell him he's going to run for Alabama it's just not going to happen you know <laughs> so so being being honest up front and and you know someone might be good enough to go to division three or NAIA or division two and that's perfectly fine you know, it's just like, are we helping them to be the best they can be when they finish here or help them to be where they want to be when they finish here? What's been the feedback from, I know you talked about a couple of, um, I, I think, uh, 20, 25s. You know, I know Hazel Avaluk's there and, and we talked about, um, I with like Haley Mack, what's their experience been like that first class that's getting ready to go I mean, literally prepping to go off to college. What's their feedback? What's their experience been like this first year? Yeah, I think that's that's something that uh, one of the reason I'm here is to elevate that experience. And uh, I think Haley and Hazel, if you can ask them, had a great experience. Hazel actually is a 25, so she's re returning here next fall. Oh yeah, but she'll have another year to develop. Uh, Renee is the same. You know, she's a 25. But, um, right. You know, and uh, but Haley's heading to college, and you know, if you want, you can ask them. They'll tell you their experience, and I think they will be, they wouldn't change it in a heartbeat. They love it here. Yeah. What uh, on the the recruiting side? What's it like now? What's your twenty six class look like? How many do you? How many guys? How many gals do you have in that class at IMG right now that you're prepping for the process? So it's a mix because, our, like I said, in the first year, our 16 class, which actually did really well at Big South, I'm really proud of them. It's a mix because they have an eighth grader there, a ninth <laughs> grader, then they have 10th grader. It's a, it's, so it's a, it's a team that was put together. But, you know, actually tonight I'm doing a, a call with all the parents to discuss recording process again as being here as a new director. is It takes time. First, I have to learn all the things that IMG does and then, now my, my main goal is how I preparing the coaches and the athletes to this next phase, you know, whether they're past uh, the juniors and they're still looking or whether they are sophomore or freshman, where are we, where are we going to be part of the journey here and how we can help them to, to start it or to, to find the right place. So, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you can't speak specifics uh, young, you know, and, and, and but we have, like uh, like I said, we have four players who are going to be on the national team development program. One of them is from the 2026 class, and it's very exciting. So let's move into that. Uh, some of the other opportunities because of the facilities, um, 
we hinted at it before, but uh, NTDP will be there, um, which I, I can't wait to get on campus and, and check that out. But is that something I know um, you guys are building a relationship with USA Volleyball or just co some corporate partnerships? Are there, are there visions down the road to bring other events to IMG like NTDP? I hope so. You know, I hope to, you know, since I've been here and I have some international connection to maybe build and have an international youth tournament here. Um, you know, we're talking about different, uh, you know, there's a club from China that are actually going to come here probably to train here, the top uh, women teams in China. They actually are meeting with them next week. So this place is global, you know, on our 16 team and 18 team, it's like we have one Spanish player and one Swedish player and so in, in IMG I forgot to mention 35 percent is international oh wow know? so so potentially going forward we can have uh, a bigger international impact on our teams as well you know as, as uh, athletes from around the world who usually come and let's say do the junior college process but now they say we can go to IMG as a junior and I'm doing my ESL here and then I finish and graduate in a U.S. school and I'm ready to go versus spending two years in junior college. So that's something that we will develop. Um, we are super excited to have the US uh, developmental team here. Um, the connection was done prior to me being here. We have a whole uh, events team here. So if I have an idea and I'm talking next with the art of coaching to maybe do an events here, I just got to bring it to them and they worked everything, all the management because we have a whole event team here, sales team that makes it work. Um, so that's something that um, as we, we grow and as I'm here is to bring the ideas and, you know, and if you have an idea and you want to run an event here, then we kind of figure out how to do it. We have the facilities, you know, there's a plan here in the next few years to build a 10 court, just multi-purpose facility, which will expand our opportunity to do even more things, uh, whether it's club tournaments, you know, maybe a uh, as we play in high school, maybe we can run the Under Armour Championship here in the fall, just like they have a future events. You know, they have those in uh, Durango, but here you can do it in one site, you know. So there's there's uh, ideas floating, you know, and, um, you know, this place, we have our own hotel here, which you will see, you know, so that they stay in right on, you know, it's a very much like a European or international model, you know, that when you have a training center that, you know, your national team strain. I hope the USA team see there's a great spot for them to uh, to uh, host future event because uh, they can all be in one place. It's not like you're in LA and Anaheim and then you don't have a hotel and you have to worry about transportations. Ten minutes from the beach here, you're in Bradenton, so it's always going to be nice. You're not going to be like in Colorado Springs when sometimes winter comes and you have tough flights to Colorado Springs. So it can be a... a a good spot for 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 years to come it's for them to decide so hopefully when they hear they will feel the, the how welcoming we are and how great this place is and and maybe the feedback will be we want to come back again um you know we will we, we have we have reached i know from some of the pro teams for next year the preseason when they don't have gyms to come here to train here as well for so so those are that there, there's endless possibilities and so if our athletes train here and you know, the love pro teams are doing preseason. They have advantage of watching them, you know, which is good. Wow. That, that's all really exciting stuff. I want to leave you with two, uh, two questions and we'll get you going and, and uh, um, thank you for your time. But number one, we always ask anybody, whether it's athletes, coaches, uh, there's people in the sport, but you've addressed this. What would you say is the biggest um, not mistake, but lack of planning prospects and families make as they head into their recruiting, right? Like what a bit of advice that you um, see maybe not handled correctly um, yeah. the most, what, what would that be? I think the, the number one thing is don't wait to be recruited. Okay. That's one. Uh, a lot of students like let's see who is going to send me a questionnaire or a camp invitation you can go and say i want to go to school x or school like if you're a normal student and you go to college you you have criteria of what measures you're looking for is it the academics the locations distance from home uh size 
city, town, whatnot, you know? So, you know, uh, parents and the kids needs to think about that as well first. And then they have what we call, you know, when I went to it with my son, it's not an athlete, you have a rich school, you have a, you know, the fallback school and you have the middle schools and you need to cast a wide net and do your homework, you know, because everybody's like, I'll wait till June, because before June 16, 15 happened, kids could call coaches and learn more and be more aware of what's going to happen. Well, right now it's kind of, let's wait and see. And yeah. then you either sit at home and they you have a thousand calls in one day, yeah. or you sit at home and you don't get any. You right. know, but like at what point is you are engaged in the process of actually, hey, school X, send me a flyer. Do I actually interested? Do I actually know what they do? Do I actually know what the coach is like? Do I actually follow them? Uh, you know, it's not just about the flash. It's about substance, you know, and the substance is really important here because if I'm going to choose to go to play for you. I want to know, you know, uh, is it the right place for me? Again, this is a, this is a, you know, uh, an important decision. So right. I, I would say that and a lot, a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, like, like right now I see a lot of parents just waiting to see what's going to happen or kids waiting to see what's going to happen. It's going to happen for some, you know, the top 5% is going to happen to them pretty quickly. Right. But, you know, many of us have to work hard to put our name out there and to work hard in the gym to get better. Um, and, 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 and the one thing in general is, uh, you know, when I, uh, the players today face an enormous amount of pressure on them at a very, very young age mm -hmm. because they are playing for something that they want to be part. You want to play at a college level. So I would say, and I watched some of the YouTube from, from the national team coach from Couch talking about the over, <laughs> over involved parents. Let your kids be kids. Let them play and have fun and let them train and get better. So, uh, this is their time to choose their path. You know, at one time I was uh, listening to Bill Cartwright, uh, a basketball player that played with Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls with the first three championship. And he said, Parents can get you to a certain point. At some point, you have to be the driver yeah. of your own car. You know, so let your kids, if that's what they want to do, let them drive it, let them handle it, let them be the speaker. Um, you know, and, and that's that's what we as college coaches a lot of times wanted to see the personality of the person. You know, we're not coaching the parent. So uh, those are the two advices I might have for every kid out there that's looking out or parents that want to help. Let your kids lead the way and work hard and good things will happen. I love it. Thank you for that. And we'll leave you with this. Uh, uh, you talk about, you've talked about the tuition and whatnot. I'm assuming, I mean, you want anybody that's interested, regardless of their financial situation, to look into it, right? They should, no matter what their financial situation is, if they're interested, there could still be a way, I'm guessing. Yes, we have financial aid here and... Uh, you know, well, if if there is a if there is a mutual uh, need here, we can we can figure it out. And you know, again, uh, I would suggest it's never hurt to reach out to us yep. to find out. Um, you know, uh, my uh, my email is my first name that my last name at imgacademy.com. You know, and I can forward it to whoever is the advisor for volleyball to send them the information and. Uh, you know, I think it's just an opportunity, just like anything else. We offer an opportunity. Um, and I think uh, it's, like I said, it's not for everyone, but it's exciting for those who are here. And hopefully more kids and players in the United States will, or the world will look at it and say, hey, you know, uh, you look at all the greats that came here in different sports. And, you know, it's just an opportunity to, to push yourself to the limit, to learn more about yourself. Uh, living away from family sometimes it's difficult but you know uh like i said if they want it reach out to us and we'll be happy to walk you through that's awesome well i appreciate your time and uh and everybody again um gilad Daron, the director of volleyball at 
the IMG Academy first year of volleyball and sounds like really big plans are ahead. And if you haven't, go on and check out their website and their facilities. And I can't wait to get there um, in, in a few weeks uh, to check that out as well. And I just thank everybody for uh, tuning in to another episode of VB Adrenaline Podcast. And if uh, you're excited, interested in what we're doing, check us out on the X um, at VB Adrenaline and on Instagram as we rebuild build our brand new account. The new address is Adrenaline Volleyball. And we thank everybody who's refollowed us after our account. Um, our account got hacked. We're rebuilding little by little and, and getting our followers back. And we're going to keep plugging away. But uh, we really appreciate the loyal followers, especially the athletes that, um, that uh, tune in and subscribe and follow along. It, it's a heck of a journey and we get to meet people like Yilad here and teach us about uh, all good things volleyball. So everybody, until the next time, I'm Darren Tipton and we'll see you on the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Take care. Thank you.